All right, so we are uh, just about ready to go. You know the rules. Do not swear. Do not swear. Should I Ben's swear. and I be standing closer to the uh, microphone? Do you think? I think the mic will pick all you guys up. Back yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, we can yeah, hear. You should be able to. Okay. Now, Alex is yeah, amplified, so we should do a quick uh, hit, hit a couple strings just to see. What okay. The goal is. Uh, yeah, I don't really have. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if you could turn it down just a bit, yeah, because you're going to overpower yeah. the others. Yeah. You don't want to be louder than everybody else. Oh, yeah, definitely. Is that, is that a good volume? Uh, well, hit, hit a couple strings again. That's good, and then can you continue doing that? And uh, I want to Art to pluck a couple strings. So, uh, Alex, if you could just turn yours up just a, just like a little uh, sliver. Okay. I think would be good. All right. So, ready when you're ready. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, let's make it a good one. Let's go. Good afternoon, folks out there in internet radio land. This is your old pal, Sid Yiddish. Um, uh, you remember me, I had a couple of programs here on Q4 Radio. Uh, some years ago I had Make Art, Make Music, Make Love, and I also did the Radio Room, and that was, as I say, a few years ago. Well, um, this afternoon we're going to present to you a, uh, a holiday program of sorts, and it's called Sid Yiddish's Christmas Mishigosh Holiday Henchman Hootenanny. I have uh, with me my... Uh, Candy Store Henchman, which I'll introduce to you in a couple of minutes, but um, what I thought we would do is uh, kind of uh, share with you our holiday memories, good and not so good, uh, of uh, holidays gone by, and holiday present, and uh, holidays yet to come. Uh, so I'll, in this case, I'd like to uh, introduce my henchman all to you. Uh, the... Uh, uh, the man who plays the uh, the exquisite skin guitar. This is thirteen four five seven nine eight nine two four seven and a half megacycles. And on uh, small instruments and uh, voice recorder, voice changer. That's Chad Chambers. And. Um, the man with the uh, orange wig and green pants, and according to Howard Stern, uh, is the most uh, is the guy with the most potential. That's Yitten Fiedel on violin, and on keys we have uh, Doctor Nothing, and of course, uh, last but never not the least, we have our old pal Dennis the Menace on uh, wood flutes. So, um, I thought I'd um, start off by asking the old eternal question, um, uh, and we can do this as a sort of a round robin kind of thing. Um, what do you, what do you guys uh, think of uh, the holidays versus, um, say, Christmas, and or perhaps in my case and maybe somebody else's case? Hanukkah. I mean, what do you think? Do you think they're all cracked up uh, to be what they are to be? Let's um, let's start with you, Doctor Nothing. Well, it's uh, kind of taken for granted right now that uh, we assume it to be consumer based, but really it's all about the light. And it's a reminder about the light and about truth and pursuing uh, 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 love through us uh, for all. That's what I consider it. Um, how about you, uh, 13? Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, how about you, Chad? Oh, uh, well, you know, I think 
it's important to remember the origins of the you know, the holidays originally. Um, you know, it was, it was a pagan holiday, just held as like a, a festival for the winter solstice. Um, uh, is the microphone picking me up? Oh no, yeah, yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. Um, just wanted to make sure. Um, yeah, they were celebrating the solstice, and then the the Christians came in and they said, "This is a good idea to have a festival in the winter, and you know we don't want them to have all the fun. We should put on our own holiday, uh, celebrate you know, our God, and and they were right. I mean, it was a good idea, even though you know." My research has shown that Jesus was almost certainly not born in December. You know, it's it's a good time for a holiday. You know, the the year is winding down. Everyone's getting that kind of uh, you know seasonal affective depression um, from the lack of sunlight, and we uh, you know it's just a good time to celebrate uh, with loved ones um, and be happy and you know, get presents. I mean that's. That's that's one of the good things about it, but but not the only good thing. Um, so yeah, that, that's uh, my feelings about the the holiday season. Um, and what about you, Dennis? Well, I do I do agree with him about the uh, history and the fact that it's probably not the day that Christ was born, and it was originally a pagan holiday. But I think now that it has become a Christian holiday, I think it's a good thing. It's a time to remember Christ who uh, is the Savior, and uh, at least that's my belief. And also it's a time for giving and uh, thinking about other people and doing things for other people, just like Thanksgiving. My problem with that is that at Thanksgiving now, we go right into getting people to go buy in the stores, and I don't think either holiday is about buying. It's about giving thanks for what we got, giving thanks for family, getting together with family and friends, and sharing good cheer and good spirit, and that's what it should be about, not not about capitalism and how much you can spend and buy. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I've, I've been on both sides of the aisle, and uh, it's become way too commercial. It, it actually starts in February, uh, it seems, I think, with the retail side, because that's, that's when the buyers start, start buying things for the next coming year in the home. Uh, and don't forget Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah, in yeah, February. yeah. And Sweetest Day. Yeah, the in uh, was that August or sweetest day is October, I think, like the okay. second Saturday in October, I think. Yeah, they with that. That's where they just said, "We need another Valentine's Day. Let's just let's just make Valentine's Day too." <laughs> right, right. I think it was an excuse to sell cards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. sweetest day was for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think all these holidays are intended to remind us that we should be thinking of these things all the time. Right. So if it's not sports, they have us pinned to the wall with over uh, over abundance of holidays. So uh, speaking of holidays, um, let's uh, let's do a traditional for the folks out there because that's what we're here to do. Uh, so let's do the uh, short version uh, of Silent Night.
right. Um, I'd like to do another one to sort of uh, try to get our holidays out of the way. Um, just because, um, personally, mm -hmm. uh, for me, holidays are, uh, to agree with you, Chad, they can be a bit of a drag for me. And um, I've uh, played many roles in, uh, in, in that uh, holiday of confusion that they call Christmas. Um, I've played Santa Claus a few times. Um, I've been in the retail end a few times. I, I assume that most of you have, too. Um, and it's, it could just be uh, overwhelming and overburdening. So I think uh, to some degrees, if, for me, the sooner the better, I guess. Uh, but we will get back to our um, small discussion um, after we do this second one, which is um, we will do the short version of uh, the throat singing version of uh, uh, the dreidel song. So, um, when I was a kid, um, and in grade school, I seem to recall, uh, there was only one holiday. It was Christmas. And um, that's, that's all we ever heard about was Christmas. Never, never Hanukkah, uh, never anything else. In fact, we were supposed to make Christmas things. Um, one thing I remember we made was um, a candle made out of the, the base was soap and I think the candle was some kind of wax and the flame was a felt like a fe uh, some, like made out of felt and then there was sort of some kind of um, netting around the candle and that was something that we would take home and give to our parents and when you're a Jewish guy and you're bringing home some uh, Christmas stuff it's not exactly welcome in, in to your home. I mean, nonetheless, we had it for years. I, I recall it was in a, it was in a, some kind of display case, as parents tend to do. They put that kind of stuff you make at school and, uh, in a display case of some kind. And then when you're uh, big and famous years later on, they can sell it on eBay and uh, you know make lots of money from it. But uh, but. Um, by the time uh, I got to fourth grade, which would have been about age 10, we, um, so we suddenly recognized there were two holidays, um, uh, Hanukkah and um, Christmas. And there was a um, guy in our classroom who, um, we, uh, who played Hanukkah Harry. And, uh, <laughs> and it, it, yeah, this is true, this is true. And he pranced around in a yamaki and he had like a menorah in one hand and he had a sack in the other hand and he like danced around and danced around with somebody who was dressed as a Christmas elf which I thought was pretty silly but I was I was pretty embarrassed when I saw that and um, but he, he just he just he just looked dumb it just looked dumb and it was it's something that um, is forever kind of left me with an imprint obviously because I'm talking about it but um, I always uh, feel that there's some kind of uh, competition between the holidays, and it's 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 really it's become more and more and more commercial. You know, it's more and more pushed at you. I, like uh, when I was in New York about a year ago, I remember a uh, display window up somewhere up in the village uh, where I saw actual Hanukkah stockings, and um, it was it's just really an insult to our intelligence and um, I mean traditions are traditions and I realize that people are trying to invent new ways uh, you know on an old idea but um, you know don't insult the intelligence of uh, those who are um, uh, you know celebrating it 
Uh, anybody want to jump in for that? Uh, Jeff? Um, I, I don't know if I have anything to add to that. Uh, I have uh, some of my own memories yeah, that I, I could yeah, share. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, there are, there are two that I can think of right now um, that are um, both memories from long, long ago uh, when I was a, a tiny little child. Um, one of them I don't even really remember, um, aside from seeing a video of it years later, but um, you know, this is something that has grown into uh, sort of an inside joke for my family because my parents would talk about it every year. And uh, the story is uh, one year, I think my sister and I were, I think, maybe three years old. And my sister, uh, for Christmas, got a toy kitchen set. And the first thing she did with it was she opened up, I think, the oven door and stuck her head in the oven. And, you know, and not, not in a... I agree. <laughs> Not to be grim, but right. uh, but she put her head in, in the oven and, and just yelled, "Had a you, had a you." <laughs> I think I think she must have been trying to you know see like is anyone in there or something like that. She hadn't really really learned how to talk. Oh, she yet. sang hi to you, hi to you, so, or or like how how are you? Who who's there? Something like that. Um. <laughs> the, the, yeah, I think she, yeah, she was either two or three when that happened. Uh, the other one that I remember was uh, I think I must have been five years old, and um, I, I was, uh, I, I loved TV back then, um, and I loved reading the TV schedule in the newspaper, and I remember. Um, finding a note under the Christmas tree, and it was the last thing that I opened, and it said, look in your mailbox for one last present from Santa. And so I, you know, it was early Christmas morning, still dark outside, and there was you know, probably a foot of snow on the ground, it was freezing outside, but I, I went out to my front porch and opened the mailbox, and in the mailbox, there was an issue of TV Guide. My parents had bought me a subscription to TV Guide for Christmas. <laughs> and and to me, that was the best Christmas present I could have gotten. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so the, those are my, my two favorite Christmas memories, at least uh, as far as I can think of right now. Uh, Dennis, do you want to add to that? Well, I've had a lot of good Christmases because I've had a good family, and I'm, it's it's it, it's nice. I mean, it's I, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't have great families. They have families that are uh, misfunctional, and, and families that are so poor they can't afford gifts. And uh, I think that's a sad thing. But I'm I've, I've been very lucky. My family was really good to me, and I've had. Uh, so many good Christmases, I couldn't uh, begin to tell you which were better. They were, they were all can, good. Can you uh, share a couple of those uh, memories with us? And the radio listeners out there? Well, yeah, if you can, get a little closer to the mic because yeah. you don't project as much as John. Yeah, well, I mean, I've had, uh, you know, well, you know, just getting a lot of stuff that I, you know, that I wanted for Christmas and getting money. And uh, More recently, we've had, I go to my brother's down in Champaign and uh, my one brother, he always has this game that he plays where he brings this big bag and he's got this book of trivia questions and it goes around by age and since I'm the oldest, <laughs> now that my mom's gone, I'm the one that gets the, uh, the, the gets to go last when it goes around and if you, you get a trivia question, get it right, you get to put your hand in the back and pull something out and there's anything in there from, uh, from something really nothing to uh, $200 gift certificates for different stores and stuff like that, and it's a lot of fun. But, uh, is that pretty much, and you played the game, that game for how long? Right? He's been doing that for about three or four years now. Mm -hmm. okay. My grandmother has a similar game at our Christmas get-togethers where uh, she'll find something, something unusual and wrap it up, and we all have to pass it around and just try to feel the, the president 
I feel the president try to figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. And the person who has the closest guess at the end ends up winning the mystery present. Yeah, um, we did that in uh, uh, last year when I was in Denmark. Um, I had I went to two different celebrations of uh, Christmas, and one was uh, a little bit smaller than the other one. I think the first one had like eight people, and the, the second one had like 20 people, three dogs, a parrot, a lamb, uh, four cats. Yeah, parrot. This parrot spoke Danish. It was it was great, um, and I couldn't figure out why it was speaking Danish. And I thought, oh, duh, I'm in Denmark. Uh, but um, um, so they they had this they they've got this tradition in uh, Denmark that if uh, inside this pudding there's like a, a a nut or an almond in it, and if your pudding has the almond in it, it could be a half. If it's a half almond, you get something like uh, some form of jams or jellies or something like that. And if it's a full almond, you get a nice box. At least the family I was with, you would get uh, liquored flavored chocolates. Um, I think I lucked out because I'm the one who uh, got the full almond. So uh, I still have the, I still have the uh, liquor uh, the liquor chocolate. So. Uh, Trying to find a, a, the right time to eat it, but uh, it's, there's never there's never a right time for liquor and chocolate for me. So, um, but the other one, the, the other one with the with the family, uh, they would. Um, it was different. It was uh, since there's so many of them. Uh, it was like the half almond. If you even got a half almond, you won, and I won the box of chocolates. So, I'm not sure if they did that because I was the guest, but uh, it it. I'm not. I'm not certain about that, but there's always that possibility. But anyway, the the game about passing the uh, passing the gifts around, we we would do that too, and then uh, it would stop on us, and we'd have all the gifts. And then if somebody wanted to sort of call out and say, "Hey, I want this one," or "I want that one," they would take it from you, and it would be so on and so forth. It would be like that until you'd end up with all these strange looking gifts because and the thing is there could be anything in these gifts I mean there could be totally just boxes you know of yeah. nothing yeah <laughs> uh, and I, I did I did get a couple of those I also got some mustache corkscrews too so uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's a mustache cork well it's like a wine uh, you uh, you take the you take the mustache screw and you screw out the cork and out comes your wine oh cool so um but uh, uh, the one thing I, I learned about Christmas over there is that it's a little different over there. Um, it's way different over there. The commercialism seems to be gone because I think when I was there, the, uh, I had gotten there the week before Christmas, and it wasn't as like, uh, like the way it's so glitzy and glamorous here in America, especially in, in Chicago. And there it seems to be a bit more... Um, they seem to um, have it in them that... Uh, you know, well, this is what we have to do, and, and we're doing it. So th they seem a bit more uh, organized, as opposed to the sort of the um, way American is just like sort of all over the place, like splattered like a, you know, like a snowball on the sidewalk or something like that, uh, which is probably the best way to describe it. What do you... Oh, uh, uh, oh sorry. Oh, go ahead, uh, go I, right in. I, I just, I, I remembered one more thing um, in... Uh, talking about the the mystery gift game, I actually just remembered that a few years ago, that's actually how I got this 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 shaker. Uh, they were we were passing it around, and I I shook it, and I heard the noise, and I thought, oh, I I recognize this. This must be a percussion instrument, <laughs> and th so that's that's where this comes from. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Talking nothing. Yeah, I've actually. Uh... Uh, been fortunate to uh, be in the observation of both holidays growing up, uh, Hanukkah and Christmas, likewise. Uh, my mother was uh, Catholic side, and my father was, I mean, my mother was the Jewish side, and my father was the Catholic side. So, uh, going to the Hanukkah, or, or the Jewish memory first, is uh, the observation of, um, or just uh, not observation, but uh, um, abstaining a night from food. So uh, I think I was eight years old, and uh, 
uh, my grandfather he asked me, uh, well, are you going to abstain from food for the day? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'll try that. Well, the next day, uh, he discovered the candy dish was empty. So that was... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever abstained a day without eating, uh, to be honest. But, uh, but uh, a Christmas story, uh, I, I was six at the time, and uh, my father would always play the role of Santa Claus. So this was uh, the day before Christmas, uh, and uh, my father asked me... Uh, um, uh, who is Santa Claus? And I think that was the question, but my response is I pointed my finger at him. And then, again, I was six years old, and uh, I don't know what occurred to me to point my finger at him. Maybe because I rationalized that he was too big to fit through the chimney. Um, well, I, I think you told me recently, um, when I, I played uh, Santa Claus a few times, um, I played Santa Claus at uh, Golf Mill in, in Niles, Illinois, in 1986. You're very convinced that you sat on my lap. Yeah, I do remember that. Uh, um, I think it was actually my grandmother, who's Jewish, that took me to sit on your lap. Uh, and, and she's the one that also told me, don't worry about eating cheeseburgers. <laughs> uh, so she was, she was pretty radical for, as, a, as a Jew. So. Yeah. Um, you know, she, 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 was, she was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I do remember uh, looking up and uh, my head had brushing against your beard. Um, and uh, Felt kind of nice, actually. Uh, yeah, and, and then the picture was taken. Uh, I gotta find that picture. Somebody has it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just recently found some uh, photos from that time and... Uh, oh, more likely Sid's got my photo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, like a thousand all, all my, all my, all my photos are up here in my head. Um, Thirteen. Uh, we haven't gotten to you yet. Uh, are there any um, uh, memories you'd like to share? Uh, so I, I have an option for the two that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, I would like you guys, thirteen, and eat meat and feedle. If you could. Describe your experiences by playing your instruments. <laughs> and you are everybody else is welcome to join in, so you won't feel like you're all like there's no no pressure, no pressure. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I, I just like can't I can't do it because every Christmas like I I I'm always just so excited that I I just black out the entire Christmas and like don't remember anything. <laughs> Like I just, I just, I, I yeah. Ever That's like a Christmas binge. No, it's not. It's not even out. Like just as a child, I would just, I would just get so excited, and then just, just I was out, and I've never actually experienced a Christmas even to this day. And like I, I always get like really anxious thinking about it, and like I'm not even excited anymore. I'm like I'm really scared, you know. And then I just like it's just. Sounds like you need to relax. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should give maybe I should so, give you those liquored uh, chocolates that yeah. you got from Denmark. Yeah. So really, like, th yeah, the best way to express it musically is to not play anything. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, mean feel. You wanna? Uh, would you like to describe it on your instrument for us? I I don't know exactly. Uh, How about let's uh, let's. I, well, as, as a, a child, uh, I was always uh, going to church uh, on Christmas, and so I used to sing a lot of Christmas carols, so I liked that part of Christmas. I liked the, the music part, especially. Different, uh, different carols.
time at Christmas, um, as I kind of sensed uh, when we talk about Christmas in general, because it's kind of a, one of the, it's like sort of like a internal powder keg, so um, sometimes I think it's just best to uh, let it go with improvisation and, and uh, music and how you feel with it, but uh, just in case you're joining us, um, you are listening to AM 1680. Q4 Radio, and uh, this is your old uh, pal Sid Yiddish, and uh, I'm here with uh, my candy store henchman, and 